conspiracy so big you won't even believe it. Who's there? What your camera saw at the fashion show could be the key. Blow me $20. Why? Do I complain when you ask me for money? Now, come on. Fork over some of that community property. The line's dead. Ever try to be fascinated by the Library of Congress building for an hour? Where were you? Watching you. That's why I set up this fallback here. By the way, you weren't followed. Fallback? Playing spies now? What's next? James Bond drops out of the sky in a gyrocopter? Why the hocus pocus? Because this is dangerous. I'm probably being watched myself. And your phone is tapped, the mail steamed open. Get real, Barnett. Those guys are a thousand miles south of here. You've been in D.C. too long. A good story can get you hurt. It's not like trolling the bars on M Street looking for rumors from the Senate cloakroom. <sighs> She's here. She's got the clincher with her. How'd she get out? Private jet. She's going to some charity wingding tonight. A friend of hers asked her to help out. Uh, Mickey Dennis over with the champagne and chit-chat crowded state. Why mess around with that? Cover. This way I can run into Teresa without an eyebrow being raised. She passes it to me, I pass it to you. Nine or so at the Park Potomac. Look nice? These people use knives and forks. Not yet. He stays alive long enough to lead us to the woman. Tonight's mystery, photo opportunity.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second annual Women of the World Charity Fashion Show. This will be a silent auction, and bids will be collected after the show. We'll begin this evening with three fabulous cocktail suits. Congresswoman Ann Underhill of Texas looks smashing in a three-piece ivory wool and crepe suit with a peplum silk trim and midriff detail with rhinestone buttons. Just the thing for those long, dreary filibusters. Mrs. Welch, wife of the Canadian ambassador, looks lovely in a two-piece wool crepe suit with slit skirt, white silk collar and cuffs, and lovely rhinestone buttons. Denise, how's it going? Oh, I think I got some terrific stuff. Great. I really appreciate this. I know it's not frontline photojournalism, but it's worth And here is Janice from my favorite from system. Sorry, it's it's a that's my last few jungles. No glitz and glamour. Yeah. In black wool crepe with rhinestone oh. buttons. I think you and a portrait it. color in oh, wow. white oh, suit. This. I should have used only professional look. I'm just gonna look terrific. I'm break my hand. Okay, then you'll look terrific on crushes. Go, go, go now. Terrific, ladies. Oh, now for some evening gowns. And here's the ravishing Michelle Dennis from the State Department. Mrs. Dennis is one of our gracious for this Beautiful evening. dress. Buddy, I can't even see the dress. Only what's tucked inside. Congressman, this is a fashion show, not a strip tease. Sure. Sure. She's wearing a damn a wedding ring on with a modified bustier. I wonder if her husband's an understanding man. No, I'm not. On Michelle's left hip, is a rhinestone mirror de vie. Here we have Natalia Kropotkin from the Soviet Embassy in a red, of course, strapless evening gown. It's made of silk satin and chiffon, with plissé and a double rhinestone detail. Let's take a few moments to fill out our bid sheets. Chris Barnett? <laughs> <laughs> the lady with the camera. Oh, the last time I saw you was in a Huey clipping the treetops over San Domenico. Me with my laptop and you with a magic 35 mm. Boy, we caught a piece of history that day, huh? Magazine should have given you a cover. Yeah. Maybe next time. Still looking. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Are you still married to that camera? Oh, till death and do us part. the charming Teresa Montoya. Teresa is wearing a deep red silk chiffon. So is that why you're suddenly interested in high fashion instead of high intrigue? Stories turn up in the strangest places. Oh. Stories like Teresa Montoya. Now, isn't her husband high up in the San Domenico cabinet? Mm-hmm. Your uncle's a member of the loyal opposition. Aha. Uh -huh. So what side is she on? What side is Ambition Ember on? Nice talking to you, Denise. Chris. Uh, since the action's on stage. Uh-huh. Maybe, maybe not. What's going on? Chris Barnett. This day he was one of the best stringers the wire service ever had. Was? He dropped out of sight last year. Oh, well, he hasn't dropped out of mine. Now, that's Teresa Montoya, San Domenico. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. That's one of Mickey's annual volunteers. Is she anti-government or pro-government? That seems to be the question of the year. Her uncle, Carlos Fernandez, was assassinated six months ago. Uh-oh. I think Chris is on to a story. Oh, oh! Easy. You flaunt your affair. Again? And in public? Is that what troubles you the most, Eduardo? Hmm? Yeah. Your vanity. to me. When I have done everything for you, was I only politically expedient? Nothing more. She's helping you somehow. 
You two, what are you doing? Hmm? Looks like your fashion show's about to go from the society page to the front page. I don't take orders from you. It's a honey, do something. What are you talking about? It's a domestic wall. Calm them down. Calm all of them down? Champ. Excuse me. You think you can reason with that pig? Hello, everyone. Hi. Well, welcome to a wonderful, great evening we're having here. And oh, yeah. Every year, you're the big hit. You don't see him. Is this your agent? I know a lot of fashion photographers. I am her husband. Excuse us. Teresa? Please. Buenas noches, senor. Ah, and you, gentlemen, I want to thank you personally for coming here and sharing this glamorous evening with us. Let me add, you look smart in those tuxedos. Sort of fits right in with the fashion show. <laughs> I'm signing your way, sir. Sorry. Come on, let's go. Oh, what about Chance? My brother can take care of himself. Let's go. We agreed on a price. The story has changed, Shaver. It's bigger than it was. After tonight, I'll have solid evidence on both Fernandez's murder and a conspiracy so big you won't even believe it. But I, I can't pay any more. I guess your exclusive remains my exclusive. Who are you going to sell it to, huh? Your credibility is shot. I don't know. Hope the evidence I'll have tonight. I may not need you anymore. Did you get it? Yeah. I just wish I knew what I got. Using his loyalties. Yes, eh? Edipo. Chance, are you all right? Uh, yeah. I had to throw those two stiffs out of here. Well, you haven't changed, I see. Nobody's given me enough of a reason to. Chris, this is my brother, Chance, and his wife, Mickey. Uh, listen, folks, about what you saw here tonight, I wish you'd just keep it to yourselves. What did we see? Story of a lifetime. Actually, two stories. Murder, political ambition, and it's very hot and very lethal, and I don't want to see anyone else endangered by it. Well, Chris, if you're in any kind of danger, we... No. Doing it your own way, as always. <laughs> don't worry, Denise. Everything is under control. Look, I've got a couple hours to kill, and by then I'll have this baby wrapped up. And once this story breaks, you'll know why I had to keep a lid on it. Take care, Chris. Don't I always? Will he take care? Mm-mm. He's never learned how. Okay. 
In here. What's wrong? Nothing. You're using the dining room. Yeah. We only use this room when your parents are coming over for dinner or for sorting out tax receipts. We're not being audited, are we? Well, not that I know of. Your parents are coming over for dinner? Oh, relax. You're safe on both counts. San Domenico is attempting to normalize relations with the U.S. Protocol's arranging the first meeting. Now, there's a coincidence. Last night, San Domenico provides unexpected entertainment at the fashion show, and this morning, my wife just happens to be working with them. Well, I call Ralph Sholnick at State and ask to be reassigned. He sent these files over this morning. Uh, that'll be Hugo. He's been pacing out there for 20 minutes. Mickey. I have certain insights into this because of Teresa. It could be very interesting. I'll keep out of trouble. Yeah, like a fish keeps out of water. Chance. Denise, what's wrong? It's Chris Barnett. He's been murdered. What? You liked Chris a lot, didn't you? Yeah, when you've uh, been in the trenches together and, and you... you... Here, Denise. Thanks, Mick. Chris was a wonderful reporter. He was tough and fair. Denise. What your camera saw at the fashion show could be the key. Chris talked to a lot of people. People we should know more about. I thought about that. I shot about 30 rows of 35. Hundreds of frames. I'll have to cull through it all. Then I think you better get back to your dark room and make a quick pass. Are we mobilizing here? What about the coffee? Too bad for your metabolism, Hugo. I'm responsible for letting you in here, so watch it. The victim's pockets were clean, and nobody slept here. What about Barnett's personal effects? Eddie, let's have the pockets, huh? Thanks. Keys, wallet, parking stub stamped early yesterday afternoon. We're running it down now. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Eddie. Uh-huh. Was the safe empty? Almost. We found a few fibers in the safe hinge, heavy synthetic. Maybe nylon, black in color. Do you have any idea what it could be? Hey, they're trying to make a match on it right now. Whose room was this? Well, the name of the man on the registration card is Fernandez. Fernandez? Wait a minute. That's the name of the opposition leader from San Domenico. He was assassinated not too long ago. Yeah, well, the description I got from the desk clerk sounds like Barnett took this room himself. So far, sounds pretty straightforward. <laughs> we got a body and we got a murder weapon. Just like the textbook says. Oh, well, don't give me textbook. The body has a bullet in it. The weapon we found is a knife. Yeah, I love this stuff, don't you? Ah. I was supposed to have a meeting with a Miss Gallegos. Forgive the imposition, Mrs. Dennis. Colonel Rafael de Vargas. When I heard you were coming, I asked Miss Gallegos if I might borrow you for a few moments. How can I help you, Colonel de Vargas? Please. Uh, we are interested in locating Mrs. Teresa Montoya, one of the models in your fashion show. We? My government. Uh, she's uh, the wife of one of our top officials, and uh, <laughs> she's not been seen since the show. What position do you hold with the San Domenico government? <laughs> Liaison, envoy, troubleshooter. <laughs> Choose a word. Been shooting any trouble lately, Colonel? I beg your pardon. Would your position have brought you in contact with an American journalist named Chris Barnett? The name is familiar to me, but uh, what has Mr. Barnett to do with our discussion? He was murdered last night. Possibly he was killed by a critic. <laughs> I really shouldn't keep Miss Gallegos waiting any longer, should I? Perhaps not. Uh, thank you for all your help. My pleasure. A very careful lady. 
Her husband was the one who interfered last evening. You allowed him to interfere. And so your wife is now missing. She has already betrayed you. And yet you remain in love with her. You're not a very intelligent man, Eduardo. Both of us must live with that. But I hope you are at least a careful man. Eckers is anxious to see these. All he's got now is a bunch of weird physical evidence and nothing to tie it together. Well, where did they find that knife? In a plastic bag near the bed. Does that make sense to you? Well, it does if the murderer was trying to preserve the evidence for the police. Kind of thoughtful of him, wasn't it? But were Chris's fingerprints on the knife? There were prints on it, but not his. All we've got is a murder and a weapon that don't match. Oh, this is too weird. These pictures over here, what are they? Well, these are the most interesting ones so far. Teresa, her husband. Uh-uh. Brought of me here. We can lose this one. Whatever you say. And destroy the negative, please. Uh-huh. Any other pictures with Barnett talking to anyone else? Yes. Uh-huh. Now, Mickey and I tried to eavesdrop on a very intense conversation between Chris and this guy. You know who it is? Sorry. This picture with Teresa and Barnett. I'm shaking hands? If they're trying to shake hands, they should take lessons. You know, you're right. It's like she's handing him something. Can you enlarge that area right there? Yeah. Any theories on what she'd give him that she didn't want seen? A note, maybe. him a key. But now, Chris's date for the evening was the blonde. What is he doing getting keys from Teresa? Maybe it was a drop of some sort. Teresa takes the black nylon thing, puts it in a safe for Chris to pick up. Then she slips him the key at the fashion show. But what's in the bag? And where is she? All we got now is a bunch of questions and the answer ladies drop clean out of sight. Got your message. Akers wanted us to meet him here? Well, actually, he wanted to meet you here. I invited myself. How did I know that? Any luck at the embassy? More than I expected. I was intercepted by a Colonel de Vargas. <laughs> Guy in a uniform, 40 pounds of medals, creases to cut roast beef. It couldn't have been more obvious if he'd worn a sign that said, support your secret police. He was at the hotel last night ordering those two goons around. De Vargas on the hunt for Teresa Montoya. Well, where is she? Well, he said she disappeared from her hotel room last night. Thanks for tracking him down, Mickey. Yeah, what have you got? The blood on the knife is not Barnett's type. Lab says it's not fresh, uh, six months, a year. Well, those fibers from the hotel room safe are from a black nylon material used in backpacks, athletic bags, things like that. The lab says it was a black sports bag. The parking stub was from the garage in this building. Decade magazine? Yeah, Barnett was a reporter here up until about six months ago, not since then. Well, then he came here the day he was murdered. Yeah, I have an appointment with the publishers. Uh, you guys want to tag along? Definitely. Yeah, yeah well, before we do, do you know these guys? Uh, yeah, one of them gave me a lift last night. Don't ask. Well, they've been on my tail all morning, and it's beginning to annoy the hell out of me. After you. Yes? Mr. Scotia, this is Mickey Dennis with the State Department and her husband, Chance. The State Department? Yes, there are certain international elements surrounding the death of Chris Barnett. I'm not surprised. Oh, this is Steve Shaver, one of our top investigative reporters. I'll try to see if I can get to Senator Murbank for comment. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Scotia, on the telephone, uh, you told me Barnett hadn't worked for you for six months? That's correct. 
Not a good enough writer? Chris Barnett was a brilliant writer. But he lost something. What was that? Credibility, Ms. Dennis. The most important credential a reporter can own. Chris fabricated a story laying the death of Carlos Fernandez at the feet of San Domenico's ruling party. We published it. No proof was ever found. I printed a retraction and fired Chris. Why would he take a chance on ruining his career like that? He lost his objectivity. Chris wanted to help the opposition overthrow the government. However much I could agree with his sentiments, I couldn't condone his methods. Well, sir, if you've had no contact with him since that incident, why did we find a parking stub from this building dated yesterday in his pocket? I have no idea. He certainly didn't come to see me. This is Carlos Fernandez and his niece, Teresa Montoya, isn't it? Yes, it is. To my true and loyal friend. Not only were you sympathetic to the cause, but you were obviously very close. It must have been very difficult for you to retract the story and then fire Barnett. It was the most difficult thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. Well, I'm heading back to the Park Potomac Hotel. You under something, Stan? Maybe. I'll let you know. Chance, let me look at those pictures that Denise took. Yes. I knew it. That's where I saw it. Where? Upstairs in the office. Who, Shaver? Yeah, this is the guy who had the fight with Barnett. That's why he looks familiar. He must have been the one Barnett came here to see yesterday. Well, what do we do? Loan me $20. Why? I'm going to make an impulse purchase. Make it $40. $40? Do I complain when you ask me for money? Now, come on. Fork over some of that community property. How come you always have more money than I do? Planning. Let's go, dear. Shaver. Who is this? I know what's in the black bag. Tell me. Haven't you heard? Information's no longer a free call. I want what you were going to pay, Barnett. You have the bag? Parking garage, Morgenthau Building, 3 a.m. still doing that? I wasn't sleepy. Here, drink this. Double Guatemalan dark roast with a spoonful of chocolate for energy. Wow. Stop that. It never hurts to be neat. Now, you take your body upstairs and put it under an electric blanket. This will be a snap. Sure. I'll wait up. I'm gonna be okay, all right? Now give me a hug. Mm. I'll be fine. I know. I was looking out the window upstairs, thinking about Teresa. How can this city be so big and busy and get so damn quiet and lonely? We'll find it. We will. If we don't, it'll be my fault. Not because you didn't try. Because I asked her to come here in the first place. I gotta go. Now be careful. Okay, you try to get some sleep. Bring the money. Let me see the bag. You. Who were you expecting? Deep throat? Who are you, a cop? No, I'm a college professor. You're a newspaper man, Mr. Shaver. 
I want your expert opinion about an article I'm working on. But Chris Barnett, discredited reporter, stumbles onto the biggest story of his life. A story concerning San Domenico. How am I doing so far? Your presentation lacks something, but you still have my attention. Good. He figured that no one would believe him this time, so he approached another reporter. But you see, this story is a career maker, so he wanted money from the other reporter. <sighs> okay, okay. He was acting like the whole CIA was on his case. Meet me here, there, secret signals. We finally agreed on a price. And then after he talked to Teresa, he wanted more, more than I could pay. So you killed him. You don't believe that. Why not? You wouldn't meet me like this if you did. You're right. Whoever killed Barnett took the black bag, and you're still looking for it. This is a little something I bought this morning, $39.95. Nothing in it but wadded up old newspaper. Nothing you wrote. What do you want? I want to know what was in the real bag. I don't know. It's the truth. All Chris said was that it was proof, proof of a conspiracy. Proof Fernandez? Yes, but more than that. And something much, much bigger. And much scarier, he said. That's it? He also gave me a name. Rafael de Varga, head of the San Domenico secret police. Whatever the conspiracy is, de Varga's right in the thick of it. And Chris said that if de Varga gets a hold of that bag, God help us all. Over a little more, Mickey. Yeah, that's it. You know, Teresa smuggled that black bag out of San Domenico for Barnett. For love? <laughs> they were on opposite sides of the political struggle. Were they? Little Laura. Yeah. Okay, Barnett sets up the drop in the hotel room and somehow gets the key to her. Harder, harder. That's it. <laughs> what was in that black bag? Wait a minute. Barnett told Shaver he had some evidence about who killed Carlos Fernandez. The knife. Maybe we got the right weapon, but the wrong body. That could be the knife that killed Fernandez. But, honey, we're just dancing around in the dark until we find Teresa. Wonder where she could be hiding. She didn't seem to be getting along too well with her husband. I doubt if she's with him. Mickey, we've got to go. Go? What about my feet? I'll get those beautiful feet later. I think I've just guessed who's hiding Teresa. All of a sudden? Oh, who? Remember when we were in William Scotia's office and I saw that photo? It said, to a loyal and trusted friend from Teresa's uncle. Who do you know at this hour we can get Scotia's home address? Uh, maybe Ed Leslie at the Post. He's always up at the crack of dawn to get a jump on the European wire services. Dial. Rub. Four twenty-three, please. Lieutenant Akers, please. Chance Dennis. Well, where is he? It's a secret. We wouldn't tell. Yes. But I need to talk to him. All right, all right. Have someone from Metro track him down. Yeah. Tell him we've been following William Scotia, and he's up at the Park Potomac, and he's up to something. Chance. Senor. You get back in the room. You're interested only in a story like Barnett. You're wrong. So I'm wrong. You die anyway. Room service. Always intruding where you don't belong? Story of my life. It's no use, Montoya. 
My wife went for the police. They will arrive a little too late, senor. Stop it. <laughs> you won't shoot me. I have diplomatic immunity. Drop it. Cuff him. Stan, that's got to be a new record for response time. Well, one room in this hotel had already been rented under a fictitious name. So we checked, found a remarkable coincidence. The person who reserved this room doesn't seem to exist either. So we had it staked out last night. Well, why didn't you tell us? What does it say I have to tell you guys everything? We always tell you everything. Oh, sure you do. Everything's radioactive. He was legitimately recovering property stolen from San Domenico. Senor Montoya is a member of our diplomatic staff and even now sits in your jail. We have an odd habit in this country, Mr. De Varga. When murders happen, we investigate them. Lieutenant, uh, Mr. Burrell here from your State Department will confirm that you cannot hold Senor Montoya. Release him. Relations between our two governments is already strained. He's right about Mr. Montoya's immunity, Lieutenant. You'll have to turn him over to our department for processing. Processing? He's a murder suspect. And uh, the canister he must be returned to me. That's not possible. What is the problem? The damn thing was full of plutonium. Pellets for an atomic breeder reactor, something San Domenico does not have. And we turned the thing over to the AEC. And they opened the canister and saw what was inside. Well, you should have heard the language they used. You had no right to open it. That is the property of my government. Not legally. They say there was enough fissionable material there to make three or four dirty little A-bombs. My question to you is, what did you intend to do with all that plutonium? Research. Research? Like seeing how many of your neighbors you can reduce to a fine gray ash? You refuse to? Return the canister to me. Oh, it's now in the possession of the U.S. government. Mr. Burrell? Mrs. Dennis? You can always file an official request. Perhaps I have overstepped. But you will release Senor Montoya. Stan, you had no choice. What about Scotia? You gotta let him go. How did the bear get into the second room and how did Scotia get the key? I thought whoever had the bag was the killer. Whoever put the bag in the room was the killer. Scotia was just there to pick it up. And you think he'll lead us to whoever that is, right? That's worth the shot. I'll let him go. I mean, let's see, uh, this time of morning, uh, it'll take me a while to get a team on his house. Honey, I just got off the phone with Denise. She was in the dark room. At 5.30 in the morning? She has some other news for us, but she wouldn't tell me over the phone. Well, look, we have to talk to Scotia first, then we'll go see her. It'll be an hour before they process and release him. I want to go home, freshen up, change clothes. Dennis, Mr. Dennis. Mr. Scotia, may we have a word with you, please? Well, you've earned the chance. Please, come in. We want to talk to Teresa Montoya. Teresa? Well, what makes you think Teresa? Mr. Scotia. Who else does she have to turn to? No one. So 
so good to see your friend. Please, let us sit down. Bill tells me that uh, if it wasn't for you, the Varga would have his plutonium back. And San Domenico would be well on its way to its first nuclear weapon. Mis gracias, senor. Several months ago, my husband arranged the purchase of the plutonium from a certain terrorist group in Europe. He set it all off for De Varga. And you intercepted it? Yes, and I also have names, dates, everything. Teresa, the U.S. government will protect you. If we can get her to them. What do you mean, Chan? The line's dead. We better move. Upstairs. Ladies and gentlemen, all this chasing about is unnecessary. Give us Teresa. She will return to her hometown and that will be the end of it. They're going to kill her. They'll kill us all. No deal. Try curtain number two. He's out. Can I take a message? You have his gun, I suppose. Well, uh, nobody else wanted it. We could shoot our way in. Sounds like your shooting has already caused you some trouble. I don't think you want to do that again. You see, in this neighborhood, we got four senators and an assistant director of the FBI. Perhaps not this time, Mr. Dennis. I have some travel arrangements to tend to. Hasta luego. Oh, I'm glad you're awake. I want you to help me move something. Come on, get up. You're a big, strong man. See that dresser by the door? Let's take the steps. I have enjoyed my stay. Forward all my messages to my home in San Domenico. Gracias. Adios. Mickey. Mr. Dennis. Well, what a surprise. Thank you again for all that you've done. When Chris's story is published, De Varga, my misguided husband, all of them will be finished. San Domenico politics are very unforgiving. That's how you hoped it would happen, isn't it? I beg your pardon? If you helped expose the plutonium scandal, you'd be a hero in your country, wouldn't you? I wasn't looking for glory. What were you looking for when you killed your uncle? How dare you? That's the second part of the story that Chris was going to write. Murder, political ambition. You planned to ride the plutonium scandal right up to the presidency, didn't you, Teresa? You overlooked one little thing. The knife you used to kill Carlos Fernandez was found in the hotel room near the body of Burnett. Yeah, there had to be something very incriminating about that knife. Want to bet forensics comes up with your fingerprints on the handle? You seem very sure of yourself. Chris wrote me a letter the night he was killed. It just came in the mail this morning. He was worried that maybe you were on to him. He explains in this letter how he uncovered the plutonium scheme. Also, how he discovered your plot to kill your uncle. There is one thing you have overlooked. I have diplomatic immunity. Oh, that's fine. Now, Mr. Adams here from the State Department will be happy to put you on a plane to San Domenico. Naturally, we'd have to inform the proper authorities there about our findings in the death of your uncle. 
What did you say a few minutes ago? The politics of San Domenico can be very unforgiving. I waive diplomatic immunity. Well, that's music to my ears. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to... Denise, how do you want your hamburger? Rare? Uh, well, if I wanted them rare, I uh, needed to be here yesterday, huh? <coughs> They're not overcooked. I've been timing them. I think you're washed out. So what happens to DeVarga now that he's been sent back to San Domenico? I expect he'll just drop quietly off the face of the planet one day, like so many of his victims. And Chris's story will bring down the San Domenico government. Well, it's hard to tell. Someone from Carlos Fernandez's party ought to be able to call for an election. Teresa wasn't the only game in town. Could they have really built an atomic bomb? Even the hint they had the capability would have given them a lot more power over the neighboring countries. I have a present for you. It's not even my birthday. Well, just because you're my big bro. Oh, how sweet. I love it. <laughs> I thought you were going to burn the negative. Well, oh, we photographers have our methods, you know. Honey, your feet aren't touching the floor in that picture. Of course not. I'm not as tall as the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot more hair, though. <laughs> now. Just a matter of time, though. <laughs> Next on Snoops. We saw someone today. He wanted to kill me. Sometimes defectors from the East Block can't handle the freedom, so they go back or they get lost like this guy. Yeah, he was my buddy. You saw the killer. I'll never forget those eyes. You are a walking death wish. You have to get undercover. So if you can't bring Oscar to the jail, you can bring the jail to Oscar. I rely on the kindness of strangers. I know who the killer is. Treachery, deceit, dangerous liaison. You'll find it all tonight. Later, Michael Sharp orders Richard's death while a videotape of Pilar and her lover falls into the wrong hands on Falcon Crest. First, Michelle plays both ends against the middle when she moves in with Cliff and toys with James. Dirty dealings on Dallas next. Mm -hmm.